Hello and welcome to Curio Crafts. In this tutorial we're going to look at fluid painting, or acrylic pouring as it's also known. When we're first trying out a new craft or art, we don't really want to be spending an awful lot of money, so we'll concentrate on doing this painting on a budget. That said, we do need a few things. First of all we need canvases, such as these. These are 8x8 canvases and they're available at some of the uh, bargain retailers. Usually their name has bargain in it somewhere. Your local hobby store, uh, store will stock a good range of cheapish acrylic paints. And apart from that, all you're going to need is some PVA glue. Uh, now the PVA glue is used as a pouring agent. You can buy pouring agents that are specifically made for acrylics. They tend to be quite expensive. In the States you may notice that people use this. This is Floatrol. It's designed for use with um, emulsion paints. And it's a paint extender and a flow enhancer and a drying inhibitor. Which means it makes the paint more runny. And when it does flow, it flows more smoothly, so you get less brush marks. However, you can also use PVA glue, as, or school glue as you may know it, as a pouring agent. Now, from all the videos I've seen on YouTube, the main difference between Floatrol and PVA is that Floatrol um, gives you a better chance of getting cells. Now, cells has, have to be seen to be understood. The other point about Floatrol is it's archival, which means that it shouldn't discolour uh, over time, which PVA possibly can. But as I said, we're just beginners and we're experimenting. We really don't want to spend an awful lot of money. Um, a litre of Floatrol is around about £20 in Britain. So and you, you can go through quite a lot of it. Now, I have heard of experiments with this stuff. This is clear PVA. And apparently, from what I've seen, it should give better cells than Floatrol. And the way we use this is it's 50-50 mix with Floatrol and the acrylic paint, or your pouring medium and the acrylic paint. So I'm going to give that a go. So I've already prepared some pots of, of paint. I'm just going to do the last one. So it's equal parts PVA glue to the paint mix. I'm just going to mix those up. You may notice I've done an awful lot more with the white, which is because I'm going to get try and get quite a bit of white negative space. Now you might be able to see that it's quite gloopy still. So I'm going to need to add some water to that to get a better consistency for pouring. normally do this with lollipop sticks, but unfortunately I've managed to leave them behind at the workshop, so I've had to make do with plastic spoons. It's very difficult to show you what consistency it should be. And they're actually not looking too bad. But I am going to add a little bit of water. And I'm adding the water with a pipette. The main reason I'm doing that is because I've got a little bit more control of how much water goes in. This is very much trial and error, but you won't, once you've done it a few times, you'll know the consistency that we're going for. You'll be able to actually feel it as you're stirring the paint up. 
don't want it too thick or the paint won't flow and if you have it too thin then the, the paints will bleed together a little bit and it won't create such a dramatic effect so you can see the paint has got quite a nice flow to it it's not lumpy or bitty when it runs that should be the right sort of consistency for what we want the next thing to do is to prepare the canvas and just so we can lift it off the table surface or the surface we're going to pour on just got to pop a push pin into each corner and that way it'll lift it off the ground so when the paint runs off the side of it it's not going to stick to anything I'm going to use the tray to catch any drips. The last thing we can do to try and ensure that we get some cells is to add silicon to the paint. You can use a variety of things to generate cells. You can use silicone liquid. Some people have had good success with Rain-X, which is easily available here again from one of the stores with bargains in its name. Some people also use hair serum that contains something called dimethicon, which again is a type of silicon. I'm going to put a couple of drops of these into each of the colours with the exception of the white. And you literally need two drops. Now we don't want to stir this too much once we've got our silicone in, literally just to combine it in the paint. If we start mixing it a little bit too much it'll become an emulsion and it won't have any effect whatsoever. Not put any in the white on purpose because we don't need any in the white because that's really going to be a surrounding colour. I'm going to do something called a dirty flip and we're going to start off by putting some of the black in a larger cup then adding some of the other paints we don't want these to mix together so pour the paint quite carefully To add a little bit more of the red. Let's add a tiny bit of white, but not an awful lot. A little bit more yellow. And a little bit more blue. So it's simply a matter of placing the canvas over the cup and flipping it over. I'm going to seat the canvas down in the tray and just leave it for a couple of seconds just so that paint can start working its way down the cup. Now while that's happening I'm going to pour some white paint just around the sides of the cup. And especially on the corners. Because that's one place that seems to get missed quite a lot. So 
for this next bit, which is the fun bit, I'm just going to put on some disposable gloves. Uh, it does get rather messy. you look at that corner, that's what we mean by cells. So I'm just going to tip the canvas a little bit to make sure that the paint reaches all the sides. I seem to have some lumpy bits there that I want to get rid of. And I've got the kitchen blowtorch, which I'm just going to play over the surface of the paint, and that should encourage more cells to form. Just want to play the, the flame over the surface. You don't want to burn the paint or attempt to even start to dry it. I'm not quite happy with that. So I'm going to leave that now to dry. Unfortunately, that can take over a week in some cases, depending on the weather and the relative humidity. And of course, we've used a pouring medium, which is a drying inhibitor, which means it'll slow down the, the drying time. So, um, for example, the workshop that we did recently, it took 10 days for the paint to actually dry on the canvas. So I'm going to leave it there. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos of this type, then please subscribe to our channel. If you want more information about Curio and the workshops that we offer at the store, please take a look at our Facebook page. Thank you for watching.